Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Welcome everybody back to the Hitting the Turnbuckle channel. I'm your host, Adam Cousins, and this time we are going to review Collision Holiday Bash. So following on from a great Dynamite showing, AEW returned for the Continental Blue League, um, the Continental Classic Blue League, as well as uh, there was Abandon and Thunder Rosa against Sky Blue and Julie Hart, plus the trio championships of Acclaimed and Daddy Arse versus Top Flight and Action Andretti. My goodness me, the first match was Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli. Um, you, when you see those two names, you know what you're expecting. And it 1,000% delivered on it. This match was absolutely brilliant. And at the end of the match, Claudio Castagnoli had Brian Danielson beat, but the time limit expired the 20 minute draw the first draw of the continental classic was you know and it happened right at the end i don't me and dave were always saying oh this match could have been a draw that match could have been a draw the fact that this match was a draw i have no problem with whatsoever it was a heck of a fight i'd loved of it to have gone another 15 minutes but to be fair the draw made a lot of sense they hugged afterwards danielson advances to the finals with the draw uh, and it was fantastic. It really, really was. Um, it moved straight along to the uh, after a video package of the goal league to um, the acclaimed of Daddy Arse versus Top Flight and Action Andretti for the trio tiles. Mm, it was okay. I think Top Flight and Andretti are the future of that division, the trio division. It was nice to see the trio tiles back as well. Caster did roll. The interesting point is Caster. Um, did roll Action Andretti up after a missed shooting star press, held the tights for a victory. So perhaps we're going to see uh, the heel turn that we really, really need, to be honest with you, from uh, the acclaimed. In my opinion, we need that to be the heel turn that happens. But they did win. The acclaimed and Daddy Arse got the victory uh, and they move on and we'll see what happens. But it's just good to see that the trio's back. Uh, Brian Cage and Keith Lee, a good old-fashioned meat slapper, as I like to call it, on this. Uh, Brian Lee is a is a heavyweight look, cruiserweight wrestler. It may, but he's got a lot of power as well, Brian Cage. He is fantastic. This, as I said, this match was crazy. He hit an F5 onto Keith Lee, got a two count. Um, as Prince Nana was going to give Cage a cinder block, Lee counters it, picks Cage up on his shoulders and hits the Big Bang Catastrophe for the one, two, three. It was okay. It was big men bumping stuff. The rebuilding of Keith Lee is starting now and it's getting a bit, a bit of pace. Um, I'm interested to see what's next for it. So I mm, need to understand it a bit more with Keith Lee. He's been, you know, WWE... Couldn't do it. Maybe that was due to who was booking it. Who knows? Uh, gone to AEW. We expect big things. Didn't receive it. So we'll see with Keith Lee. Still, jury's still out, so to speak. Um, Christian Cage <laughs> was next. Sorry, Tony Storm was next. And Tony Storm doesn't even know who Maria May is, and she's been helping her <laughs> recently. Um, but anyway. She had, and Tony Storm has no problem packing on the pounds and, eat, and eating Riho, who won the match against Soraya for the title, uh, for the number one contendership at World End for the winter. Very nice, uh, Tony Storm. Brilliant. But it's Christian Cage now. And he actually got Shayna Wayne on it as well. Um, she The fans booed her and she didn't like that. She said, look, Christian, you know, Copeland gave my son a concerto, so I'm doing whatever a good mother would do. And that's protect her son which is fair enough. Anyway, long story short, Christian Cage uh, did say that he wishes Copeland's mother was around so he could watch her disown him. Jesus Christ. You know, Christian. Uh, amazing. Uh, but he did accept the challenge. So he will be taking on Adam Copeland at World's End on the 30th of uh, December. Uh, they went backstage again and it was Big Bill and Ricky Starks. Basically, 
chastising uh, Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega, the Golden Jet. And Chris Jericho was there actually at this point, and he will find himself a partner uh, to honour that match uh, against Big Bill uh, and uh, Ricky Starks. Uh, the Continental Classic returned at this bit with Brody King and Daniel Garcia. Oh, this was a great underdog story. You know, the, the, the Garcia certainly won the fans over and Brody King still looked like an absolute beast. The storytelling in this match was fantastic, but Daniel Garcia picks up the wick victory with a jackknife cover. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant there. The underdog story, it works so well with this. And Brody King doesn't, you know, that defeat doesn't do Brody King any harm either. The lights go out at this point. The House of Black are about to go, well, about to go for Garcia. But Bernard hits the ring and saves uh, Garcia. He dives onto the House of Black, who are about to literally beat the shit out of him, so to speak. Here, here comes FTR. They have challenged the House of Black for a match. Didn't accept it, but they want FTR and the House of Black. And I want FTR and the House of Black as well, because it will be fantastic. Um, straight away, next month... Um, was Sky Blue and Julia Hart versus the returning Thunder Rosa, who returned last week, if, if you remember, and about uh, in the uh, women's tag match. You know what? It was a it was a nice you know nice tag match, nice return for Thunder Rosa, uh, and actually they got the victory. Thunder Rosa catches Sky Blue with a double one hook sit out, um, and got the victory for Thunder and Abaddon. Uh, Abaddon who goes against Julia Hart for the, for the title uh, at World's End, and it was a nice comeback for Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa being back is really important, I think, for this women's division. She was on a great role uh, on the women's division before the injury, the stuff with Britt Baker and all of that sort of jazz. Um, so it will be interesting to see what Thunder Rosa brings to the table in 2024. I'll be looking forward to that. Could be the fact that also maybe they're not getting Mercedes Monet. Um, could have something to do with Thunder, you know, with maybe then building it around Thunder Rosa. Anyway. The next match uh, on this was the match that would determine because Brody King lost, because Brody King lost his match against Daniel Garcia and Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli drew, the winner of this match would essentially become second in the group and go on to face Brian Danielson, I believe, on Dynamo. So this was Andrade, Andrade El Idolo versus Eddie Kingston. Wow. I mean, th this is like. This match is, you could call this Eddie Kingston's career in a match. It really was. Kingston was biting down on the mouthpiece and grinding out what actually was the win. He got the win of this. But it was like kicking out a 2.99. It was the Rocky Balboa slash Eddie Kingston story on this. Andrade looked fantastic as well. But Eddie Kingston managed to get a spinning back fist twice. Northern Lights driver. Hits the one, two, three, picks up the win. And Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston go against each other on Dynamite uh, this coming week. Uh, the Continental Classic has been outstanding. With the tournament winding down, every match is now becoming increasingly more important. You can feel it. And, you know, the crowd went still went crazy for Daniel Garcia, even though he had no points. Um, you know... The fact that the, the trio championships are back as well, although the acclaimed and daddy asked do a bit more, you know, do feel a bit tired with this. Claudio and Danielson delivered as you would expect, as did the main event. Collision was brilliant this week. I absolutely loved it. But guys, you know what? That wraps up Collision's review. Please go and find us on the hit on Twitter or the HTT Buckle. Uh, go on all of our social medias. Just type hitting the turnbuckle podcast. You'll find us all of our content on YouTube. There's so many interviews. Eric Bischoff twice, DDP, Matt Buff, Bagwell, Jake the Snake, Roberts, just to name a few. Uh, but guys, keep it looked on our channels. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, everybody, buckle down and stay safe. <laughs>